guys, Richard Oldner here, and welcome to the channel. This is part two of our header shootout. Back in part one, we compared the inch and three quarter headers to the inch and seven eighths headers on a fairly mild 5.7 liter. And we saw that bigger isn't necessarily better, but I got a lot of comments from guys. Hey, Richard, what about if we ran that same test on a bigger, better motor? This one is for you. In this video, we're going to find out if bigger is actually better when it comes to headers. We're going to compare our inch and three quarter headers versus inch and seven eighths headers on more powerful LS combinations. In fact, two 383 stroker combinations, our first combination, naturally aspirated 383 near 600 horsepower comparing both the headers. Then we're going to step up even further to a 383 with a Whipple supercharger, even more power. So are the bigger headers worth more power? Back in our first header shootout, I compared a set of inch and three quarters to a larger set of inch and seven eighths headers. And that was on a kind of milder combination. And so a lot of guys are asking, well, yeah, that's true. But maybe on a mild combination, you didn't change the headers enough. You didn't go to a big enough change and or you didn't have it on a powerful enough combination to really show a difference. So what I'm going to show here is on something that's quite a bit more powerful than the test motor that we ran the, the previous test on. So we're taking a look. This one is actually a naturally aspirated 383 stroker. So obviously it's bigger and it's more powerful. This one will be up near 600 horsepower when we're done with it. This was a 5.3 liter or a 4.8 block. We bored it to a 3902 bore and put forged pistons in it. We had a 4340 forged steel four inch stroke crank. Um, we had forged rods in it. It had probe flat top pistons. This was actually in, an, I, I take this back. This was not in a 5.3 block. This was actually in a, an aluminum um, LS6 block. So it was already, we, we just bored it over just a little bit because it was originally a 5.7 block. We had a comp hydraulic roller cam in it. This cam was actually a 469 camshaft. So it was a 617, 624 lift, a 231, 247 degree duration split at 113 degree lobe separation angle. This had a set of CNC ported LS6, so 243 heads. They were done by the guys at Total Engine Airflows back when Brian was doing the heads. And this, so this was long ago, back in 2000, <laughs> back in 2010, I think. Um, the heads were done and <clears throat> they're the stage two or stage two and a half. So they flowed way more than enough to support this power level. We had uh, an LSXRT intake manifold on it. So the big, uh, ostensibly they call it a truck manifold it's not a truck manifold it's basically the same as the regular lsxrt 102 millimeter throttle body we even had roller rockers on this thing because i kind of threw the kitchen sink at it to try to get this thing to make decent power so we had aluminum roller rockers on it we started out with the qtp inch and three quarter headers same one i used in the previous video we had the collector extensions on it but no mufflers um this thing had some lightweight oil in it and 520 oil in it and we were running, uh, according to the timing here, we were running 32 degrees of total timing. We had tried playing with one or two degrees to see if we could just get, you know, eke out just that last little bit. But run with the inch and three quarter headers. Our 383 produced 583 horsepower, 582.8, and peak torque checked in at 546, 545.7 foot pounds. And here's what happened when we changed from our QTP inch and three quarter headers to the hooker inch and seven eighths headers. Again, same collector length extension. And on this combination, we weren't worried about what was happening at 2000 RPM. So we didn't run it down there. But you can see we have a similar situation that happened um, when we're comparing our smaller displacement motor. The inch and three quarter headers were better. Um, in the middle part of the curve, so from 3,900 all the way up to about 5,000 RPM. And we're talking about, this is just really splitting hairs. Unless you saw this on the dyno, you would probably not be able to tell this on the track. Because what you're seeing is, if you ran this thing from 4,000 to 6,500, you have more torque from 4,000 to 5,000 down low from the smaller header, but then more power up top from the bigger header. And up top, the peak power went up to... 587.6 so we can call that 588 horsepower so we picked up essentially five horsepower at the top from the bigger header on a 600 horsepower stroker combination the inch and three quarter header made a little bit more peak power 546 versus 541 so five foot pound trade-off the interesting thing if you look down low <laughs> down below 3800 rpm 
Um, it looks like the inch and seven eighths headers might be doing a little bit better down low. Um, but we don't know what's happening. And th these are kind of the load in points. So I don't pay a lot of attention to initially what's happening from the first load in point. But you might see something like that. And we kind of saw a little bit of that, uh, the, the thing, the trade off deal that was happening, especially down low between the headers. But this is an interesting thing. A lot of guys think that they're, they want an absolute number of, okay, Richard, at what power level do I need the bigger headers? Well, you, again, here, there's still a trade-off here at 600 horsepower. You get a little bit more through the middle part and a little bit less on the top. So which one would you pick? But if the bigger header doesn't work on a naturally aspirated 383, how does it work on a supercharged 383? So now we're going to take a look at the effect of long tube headers on an even more powerful combination. This is another 383, but this one was equipped with a Whipple supercharger. So let's go ahead and take a look at the specs on our test motor. This was a 383 stroker, which means that we had a 5.3 liter or a 4.8 block. We put a 4-inch crank in it, also overboard the block to a 3.905 or 3.902 in this case. And we had flat top pistons in it, so that means the compression is going to be fairly high. We ran race gas in this, so it wasn't really a problem. We had a good size camshaft in it. It was a comp. That's a 259, a 54-259-11 cam, a 617-624 lift split. 231, 239 degree duration split, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We ran it NA before we installed the supercharger on it. When we, when we ran it NA, it, it had the fast LSXR intake manifold on it. It had trick flow uh, 215 heads, the Gen X head CNC ported. They work very well. We ran this thing with a Whipple 2.9 liter supercharger. It was a front feed. We had a 102 millimeter throttle body on the blower, and we had a seven and a quarter inch ATI dampener on it. So that was the crank pulley, and then started out with a 3.875 inch pulley. And actually, you'll see why I stepped up in header size on this particular combination. It wasn't actually to do a header test. It was more so that I could reach a given power level with the combination that we had, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. But we started off with a 3.875 inch blower pulley on our supercharger. And our supercharged combination, we ran it out to 6,600 RPM, produced a peak of 718 horsepower and 626 horsepower. But the first thing we did before I did the header test is we did what every blower guy does. And we, we, we went to a smaller blower pulley. So we went to a 3.625 and we raised the boost, spun the blower faster, and obviously made a lot more power. Peak power is up to 778 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 672. And it was at this point that I decided to change something. And we were running inch and three quarter headers on this. They were inch and three quarter QTP headers, the same one that I did the header test on with the sloppy cam and with the Brian Toy Racing um, Truck Norris cam. So these are actually the same two sets of headers. But I decided, hey, look, we need to make more power in this. I'm getting up near where I'm close to 800 horsepower. I wanted to make 800 horsepower. I didn't have any more pulleys to try to turn the boost up. And I didn't have a bigger throttle body or anything else that I thought would raise the boost up. So what I decided to do is replace the inch and three quarter headers with inch and seven eighths headers. But I wasn't trying to do a header test. So while I did this, and you guys can go ahead and get your comments ready and complain, I also added one degree of timing. So what I did basically is kind of throw the kitchen sink at it we had, um, I think this thing was run on race gas. It might have been E85. Let's see. No, it was run on race gas. And I, had I had E85 and we run E85, we definitely would have made our number. But again, I decided just to replace the inch and three quarter hairs with inch and seven eighths. But I also added one degree of timing. So you guys get to decide and make comments about how I don't know what I'm doing. And this isn't a good header test because I'm fully expecting that. But this shows that we did get gains, but but how much of it was the one degree of timing and how much was it was the inch and seven eighths header. So we installed the inch and seven eighths headers. Both of the headers were equipped with the same short collector extension. We're not really focusing on the power down at 2000 RPM on this kind of combination, but here's what happened when we changed the headers and added one degree of timing. So we saw a pretty good change in power. We only added um, timing from 4,500 on out, which is where we saw the power gains from. Not as much down low, but a lot out at the top. I also ran it another 100 RPM. Again, just wanted to get to that 800 number. And that turns out that's exactly what we did. This thing made 803 or 4 horsepower, 803.7. 
peak torque goes up a little bit to 682 foot pounds and you can see here at 6500 or 6600 we have a pretty good gain in power i mean we're talking about easily 20 to 25 horsepower gain from those two things so from the inch and three quarter to inch and seven eighths plus one degree of timing we picked up you know 25 ish horsepower so it was a pretty good gain um so you guys let me know in the comments what you think what was worth what but this is one of the tests where we did change headers and we saw a change in power so now let's get to our conclusion okay guys what do we learn from this little adventure comparing our inch and three quarter headers to inch and seven eighths headers on our two 383 stroker combinations back in part one we ran the same test on a milder 5.7 liter and then stepped things up to a naturally aspirated 383 around 600 horsepower and a supercharged 383 that was way over 700 horsepower so what did we learn first of all one of the most common comments i got in part one was hey richard at what point what power level do I need to go from the inch and three quarter headers to the inch and seven eighths? At what power level will that larger header actually start making power? I wish I had an answer, but unfortunately headers are a dynamic equation. This is much like the question when guys say, hey Richard, how much boost can I run with stock ring gap? I don't know the answer to that because first of all, I don't know what your stock ring gap is and I also don't know exactly what the causal relationship is at a certain boost level versus breaking your ring land from having insufficient ring gap and it's the same thing with headers headers are not just about flow so if it was just about flow that would be an easy thing to calculate but here's the thing to think about if we go from an inch and three quarter header to an inch and seven eighths and all the way up to a two inch or even bigger header here's the question if it was just about flow what is the size of the outlet of the exhaust port on your cylinder head? Chances are it's smaller than all of those. So wouldn't the restriction be the head port and not the header? Something to think about. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. It is a dynamic equation. We have a scavenging effect from the long tube headers we saw in part one and in part two. The scavenging effect differs on these different engine combinations. So let me know what kind of header you guys use on your combination in the comments. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing just like this coming up.